Right, step four in this uh, particular chain of videos is uh, about uh, converting your calculation into a time schedule in MS Project. So we're in the Sigma estimation now and um, I'm going to send this over to Project and notice what happens. Uh, I am in the English version of Sigma. I go into Data and Export to Project. I've got my cursor marked up here. Uh, I'm picking a couple of levels to split this uh, calculation into. Um, I, I think I want three levels of detail. And um, I am going to go to Next. And the word salary is being used to send it over because time uh, is based on salary or salary is based on time. So it's salary we, we, we want to bring over. Click Next and the number of working hours per day is seven and a half uh, working hours per day on the building site uh, and click assign uh, prices so that we can get the prices over from our calculation into each field of, of uh, activity and uh, export and this should uh, open up a MS project file on your computer and uh, and I open it up and uh, I, I have the items here on the left hand side and I have the durations which says zero but I have no I have no bars which is why it says zero here in the duration field so uh, what I'm going to do now is to uh, to close this down and I'm going to change the language in project from uh, English to Danish because this works best. The export to MS Project works best in the uh, Danish version. So go down to Options or Settings and, uh, sorry, File. File and uh, Settings or Options and Language and change this back to Danish and it'll uh, reboot again in um, the Danish version. You can see now that we're in our Danish version of Sigma. So I'm just going to reopen that file again, uh, the one I had before, um, with the uh, calculation. And uh, this one here. Um, and then I'll try and export it now to, uh, to Sigma or to MS Project using the Danish version because I find that the Danish version because I guess it's programmed in Den in Denmark uh, is working better with the export uh, to project for some reason so I'm gonna go into data I'm gonna go into um, export to project uh, I've marked my uh, cursor up here I'm choosing three levels uh, Everything is in Danish now, obviously, but uh, I'll try and talk you through it now and click Next. And the word salary uh, should actually be removed. So I'm going to remove the word um, salary from uh, and just put the word Lun in there. Lun is salary in Danish, the program, program, programming language. Uh, click Next. We're going to work seven and a half hours per day on the building site. Uh, and I'm going to click here to uh, put in the sales prices, all the prices um, for the different uh, activities and I'm going to click export and uh, Microsoft Project should open up automatically on your uh, desktop, uh, desktop ribbon and um, here you can see uh, the the, the bars are visible now and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, well first of all fix this so that it fits into the framework of my uh, video and uh, now it fits um, some of these are uh, manual schedules so I'm going to mark this uh, area up here top left hand corner and go into uh, automatic scheduling and you can see everything is automatically scheduled. Um, if I click an arbitrary space here 
and right click I can insert a column. My version of project is unfortunately in Danish, but um, if I put in a column called W for work, um, I would click in W here to find work and choose work. In my case, it's called A for Arbeiter. And you can see this is what work, the number of work uh, hours uh, each of these items takes. So, for example, the floors take up. Um, uh, 525.2 uh, man hours. These are man hours, and this this is the duration. So how do I get from here to here? Well, you remember the 7.5 I exported it with. If I take my calculator out here and I uh, put in the uh, 525.23 and divide by 7.5 hours a day, then I get. 70.03 uh, man days. So these are man hours, these are man days. How do I convert these into regular uh, work crew hours? Well, th the easiest way to do that, I'm just going to uh, make this smaller so you can see the bars a little clearly. Uh, for example, if I take this one here, structural foundations, and I want to convert this, I'm going to put some uh, manning on it, I would go into show and go into details. Notice uh, when you do this in your uh, version of project these will be fixed hours, fixed work or rather fixed work. Uh, when you measure something up it's, uh, it's measured as fixed work. So this must be fixed work. If it's not fixed work you have to make it fixed work by changing it from whatever it is to fixed work. And uh, you can see the number of days it takes uh, for these man hours. If I now put on a, a resource here and I let's call it a concreter, a concreter a person, uh, he's going to use, there's going to be one person, when I click OK the number of uh, man hours will appear here. Click OK the number of man hours appears here. Notice what happens now if I put on two people. Uh, the question is will the duration change or will the work change? Well, the work is fixed work, so it, it will not change, but the duration will be halved when I put a second person on and click OK. So I put a second person on here, click OK. Notice this will change to uh, a little above 25 uh, hours, maybe 28, uh, oh, sorry, 28 days perhaps. I'm going to click OK and it's 28.9 days. So I put on uh, a number of people here, or a number of workers, concreters, and the duration will change. But not the hours, because these are fixed, uh, fixed work. If I want to put on a person that doesn't affect the, uh, the duration, I can put on, for example, an apprentice. He doesn't actually drive the work forward, but he, he helps. So if I put on one apprentice, and I remember to put on zero here under hours, and then click OK, nothing will happen. The duration will stay the same. Click OK, the duration stays the same. The apprentice appears. And the reason for this is then well, when we do a report with the scheduling that the right number of people that are on site are as shown from the, the report. That's why we put on people who don't actually drive the, the, the work forward. In this way I could uh, put on other uh, uh, for example I can put a concrete on here I can put on one and click OK. You see the number of hours comes over, the number of days comes over. If I put on four people on here, uh, it'll change the duration of the project. And in this way, I can resource all my activities on this project. Uh, if I put on a crane, for example, in connection with, uh, with the columns, uh, let's put on some concrete as again for the, uh, for the columns here. Uh, let's put on uh, four concreters there and click OK. And you can see uh, the, the duration changed uh, for, for putting these columns up on the first floor. I mean, we, we could easily put the columns up on the first floor um, within a day. Um, I can put on uh, uh, a crane and I can put on one crane and I can put on zero hours for the crane. Uh, because it's helping, uh, it's it's part of this duration. Click OK, and the crane appears. Um, I 
must remember to put on zero hours for that crane, otherwise that uh, little mistake will happen as it did before. Um, I've now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to resource all these and then afterwards I'll get back uh, when I'm ready to um, to link them. Of course, if you disagree with the uh, the hours that are uh, that are come from uh, from the time schedule, or rather from the library, uh, you can change them here if you want to. Let's say that you don't think it's going to be 20 hours here; you think it's going to be 40 hours. You can put in 40 hours there, and then you can uh, you can resource it uh, in the same way as before um, by putting. Uh, you can see the 40 hours comes over if I put on. Uh, uh, three people here it'll be uh, reduced accordingly and, and so on and so forth with uh, regard to the uh, H -H -E -B, uh, uh beams at the top floor I've put in uh, uh, three blacksmiths uh, workers and uh, this is my duration now the next step would be to actually find the start date for the project and uh, you go into project and project information and here you put the start date for the project let's say the start date for the project is somewhere in April uh, click OK to that and then you can see the the start date is moved to uh, around about April and then uh, the next step is is just to simply to link the uh, the items in the right order or the activities First of all, I'll put the uh, the uh, activities in order. The soffit uh, of the strip foundation would presumably come uh, up uh, here next to uh, pile caps. Let me just collapse that and uh, and uh, also collapse that, and then move it by 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 marking it here, holding down the left mouse button, and moving it moving it up. Uh, for example, there. Uh, it could also be before the pile caps actually come into place that the pile caps come afterwards but you 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 put the things in the right order and uh floors before columns for example that sounds reasonable first floor before second floor etc so let's mark these up and uh let's uh link them and um you can see now they are linked in that order and um uh, when, when we've uh, done this for the whole project then we're ready to 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 look at the cash flow this uh, no level should really be renamed uh, and called something else um, so I'm just going to call it roof level and click OK and uh, we have things in in order we need to put these floors before columns so I'm going to mark those and link those together uh, after each other and uh, in that way uh, you have them in the right order because you need the floor before you can put the column up now you can see that everything is linked up uh, in a, a reasonable reasonably logical link perhaps we can right click here and put some uh, column uh, or rather bar formats in text uh, left, I think uh, S for start date. Um, uh, right, F for finish date, um, and so on and so forth. I'll put S for start date, F for finish date, N for name, and C for uh, cost. Uh, in the English version at least and then then you will get these uh, easy to read bars with their start and finish date etc and uh, if I just open the screen over here and insert uh, an arbitrary column here uh, insert column and uh, C for cost in, in your case O for um costing in my case you will have the cost here of the, um, the, the well, the, basically the total project, and this should agree with your calculation, of course. And then we can get a report out of this by... You can get several different reports. I'm just going to look at one on the visual report here. Uh, this is a, an Excel uh, pivot diagram. Uh, I will click on reports. Let me do that once again. Click on visual reports. 
go into uh, you should have something called cash flow in yours this is a Danish version so it's called Pengestrom report yours will be cash flow and choose uh, days and show uh, and show and then in a few minutes or moments uh, you should uh, have an Excel pivot diagram opening up and this is what your pivot diagram should look like it's in Excel of course and uh, on this side here you would have the total cost per item and on this side you'll have the cumulative cost for the for the whole project. You can see this is the first quarter and the second quarter of 2015 and if I click on this here you can uh, extend uh, it into weeks and days and so on. So if I take weeks and break it down into days it looks like this. Go back to the diagram and you can see this is the cash flow for your project and this line here indicates the cumulative uh, cash flow for the whole project ending up here with the total cost price uh, or the t total sales price uh, for the project and if we right click on these bars we can add, add data uh, and the data table would, would turn up here and uh, this is how you go from calculation to uh, plan in, in project to uh, the cash flow in, uh, in Microsoft Excel